What's going on everybody? It's Aurora Wide Joe coming at you with a brand new video. So I was literally just about to leave to go to my neighbors to check on his house uh, while he's gone. And as soon as I grab my phone, the literal second I grab my phone to turn my music on so I can head out the door, I get a notification from YG Org about the ritual archetype coming out. Which I think is a bit strange. We got the rescue ace archetype revealed like ages ago. Like at least two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Yeah, like at least like three weeks ago. And then suddenly we're getting Puri and uh, apparently Makanko Maihime or whatever, or just Makanko. Uh, like at, literally at the same time. That's so weird to me. But anyways, um, this is... Yeah, this is uh, Makanko. It's the new Ritual Waifu archetype coming out of the side set. Uh, deck build pack Amazing Defenders. You know, of course, we have to have the Waifu, the Mech, and the Weird One as our... Uh, as our little sort of strategy for our side sets, as uh, House of Champs puts it. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So you like equips, you like reflecting damage, say no more, sit back, and enjoy the show. So, I did catch a peek of the archetype's artwork and, like, uh, what kind of cards they have. And thankfully, it seems like it's not a Drytron situation. Like, hopefully they don't, like, break Ritual Summoning. Hopefully they're just nice and simple, like how Megalith kind of is. So let's go ahead and get right into this. So starting off, I know they have two monsters. I think it's sort of like a Live Twin, Unchained Twin, etc. situation. Uh, we have Hair the Sword Makanko. It is a level 3 Fire Warrior. Oh god, the Infernoble plays. With zero attack and defense, that says you can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. If this card is not equipped with any equip card, you take no battle damage from battles involving it. If it is, it cannot be destroyed by battle, also your opponent takes any battle damage you would take from battles involving it instead. If this card becomes equipped with an equip card, you can add a Mikanko equip spell from deck to hand. So equip spells plus ritual summoning... That's a really interesting combination, actually, because we've mainly only seen that with Synchros and Links with uh, Isolde. So I'm kind of excited to see what the rest of this looks like. So next up, we have the subsequent blue one. You gotta have red and blue together. There's, like, no other combination that Konami likes to make. Uh, this is Nini Nini the Mirror Makanko. It's a level 3 water spellcaster. Okay, so we got Fire Warrior, water spellcaster. We got exact opposites. With zero attack and defense. Uh, it says you can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. If it's not equipped with an equip card... Oh, it has the exact same uh, first effect. Okay. Uh, during your opponent's turn, while this card is equipped with an equip card, a quick effect, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls, take control of it until the end phase. Hmm. So this is definitely easier to activate than Hare or Hare, um, because it's not... Um, oh, never mind. Yeah, no, 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 never mind, never mind. Yeah, so um, this is on equip. Uh, this is just whenever, as long as it has an equip. Uh, so you're probably gonna somehow get both of these out. Um, equip something to Hare. Hare adds something to equip to Nini, uh, who you can then use to boot gang an opponent's monster. So I'm assuming you're probably gonna steal that monster and use it to ritual summon, maybe. Uh, speaking of which, here's their ritual monster. This is Makanko of the Uhime. Uh, it's a level 6 light fairy ritual with zero attack and defense. It says you can ritual summon it with Makanko Kagura, which is probably their ritual spell, or maybe the field spell, because they know they have a field spell. You can only use the first and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. You can reveal this card in your hand, add one Makanko card from your deck to your hand, accept Makanko of the Uhime, then discard one card. Okay, so it's basically Illusion of Chaos in a sense. Cannot be destroyed by battle, also your opponent takes any battle damage you would take from battles involving this card instead. Quick effect, you can target one equip spell in your graveyard, equip it to an appropriate monster on the field. So this seems like an overall really solid ritual monster. Being able to reveal it and then discard a card and then like literally add any Makanko card. Like I said, sort it's sort of an illusion of chaos, but you actually want to keep this one. It has both the battle protection and the battle damage uh, reflection, which is really solid. Because literally, because it cannot be destroyed by battle, every turn, as long as it's not getting impermed, you can just crash this into your opponent's stuff. And they can't really do much about it, especially if they're playing Link Monsters. So that might be sort of the game plan. Um, you know, hopefully you're just protecting them from card effects. Because I don't know if anything so far protects them from card effects. And then being able to quick effect just equip any equip spell to anything on the field, which can include your opponent's stuff, which I believe is strong for certain equip stuff. Um, I, isn't the ninja equip, like, really good for equipping your opponent's stuff? I don't remember. We looked at the ninja support a while back. But overall, uh, three effects on a ritual boss monster seems pretty good. Um, the, they only have three monsters, which I noticed was a bit strange. But we'll probably end up seeing another ritual monster in the future, because I highly doubt that they're only going to have this, and it's just, like, a small gimmick rather than, like, the whole center point other than the equips and the, uh, battle damage. So again, that is it for the monsters. Next up, we have the field spell, Doorway of the Celestial Makanko. It says, while you control a monster equipped with an equip card, your opponent's monsters must attack them if able. Ooh. 
um sort of sort of like a um all out attacks i guess it's called uh some like also i think there's like a savage coliseum or something like that uh, if your Makanko monster battles, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step, so it's got an Armadi's effect for all of your Makankos. And if your Makanko monster attacks, at the end of the damage step, you can send one equip card you control to the graveyard. That monster can make another attack in a row on a monster. Okay, so it actually is that exact strategy. Your main goal is you're probably going to be bashing your Makankos over and over into your opponent's monsters, and so you're just going to repeatedly be doing that with something like uh, Celestial Makanko to allow you to repeatedly do it. I'm sorry, by the way, if there's a lot of peeking with my microphone. I'm still having issues with it. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to keep it very close to my mouse so I don't have to amplify the gain or anything, but um, just let me know in the comments if it sounds fine or if it's like really screechy and gross because I've just been having a lot of issues lately. But anyways, let's go ahead and get on to their um, a quick play spell. That artwork is adorable. I love that. I don't know. I love the sort of like evil twin uh, gimmick where it's just like they both have separate personalities, especially like the red and blue stuff because usually the red's like all like very energetic or high tempered and then the blue ones like the calm one i always loved that sort of gimmick uh this is the great makanko of legend it is a quick play spell that says you can only use each effect of this card's name once per turn you can special summon a makanko monster from your hand ignoring its summoning conditions that means you can summon the ritual by the way but return it to the hand during your opponent's end phase during your main phase you can banish this card from your graveyard send a makanko card from your deck to the graveyard except the great makanko of legend so I'm assuming you're going to be using this to dump the equip spell so you can equip them with your uh, ritual. And because it doesn't have any sort of restriction, I believe the main goal is to like summon your one of your little ones, activate a uh, Great Makanko of Legends, special the ritual if you don't have the ritual spell, um, use the uh, effect of this, Banishing from Grave, to uh, dump an equip spell, and then quick effect using the ritual to equip uh, there. And then during the end phase, the ritual is going to um, equip, or not equip, I'm sorry, it's going to return to hand, and the equip spell will still be on the uh, monster that you normal summon. I'm assuming that's kind of like the main point there at least uh so let's go ahead and get on to their first equip spell it looks like they have three and then they do in fact have their own ritual spell uh starting off with blazing dance of the makanko it says you can only activate one card with this card's name per turn it says special summon a makanko monster from your hand or graveyard and if you do equip it with this card then you can special summon a monster from your opponent's graveyard to their field but its effects are negated and the equipped monster cannot be destroyed by card effects Ooh, okay so now we're getting into some really cool territory here because I did say that you will have to worry about card effects if they didn't have any sort of protection from that. But here, they have card effect destruction protection. And while it doesn't protect you from banishes or uh, sending or something like Dingir Sushurig, etc., it is still solid protection nonetheless, especially if the next one or one of them at least prevents targeting or something. I think that'd be really interesting. And I like that this isn't just something that you equip normally, but you can do it obviously with the uh, ritual monster. But you literally get a free monster reborn or just a, um, a goblin berg, I guess I should say, for the special from hand. And then immediately equip it. And that includes special summoning the ritual from grave if you've already used the ritual for something. And then it gives your opponent a monster, which can be any monster you want because it's not in defense or anything. You can summon a very beefy link monster. Uh, and its effects are negated, so they don't get the benefit of that. But you do get to crash your monster into the big monster. I don't know, man. I thought Dino Morphia was about living on the edge. But this deck is literally kamikaze your opponent to death. So their second uh, equip spell is Purifying Dance of the Makanko. It says the equipped monster cannot be destroyed by card effects. You can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. And if a monster is special summoned to your opponent's field, you can target one monster you control and one monster your opponent controls and return them to the hand. So we've got some pretty decent disruption there because not only will you have this for bouncing, but you'll also be able to have your, um, what's her name? The Nini be able to steal monsters as well. So I really like the fact that the archetype so far seems to be setting up on your turn, you're going to be crashing into your opponent's stuff, but on the opponent's turn, you're going to prevent them from going at least a little bit too ham, so that you have more control over the board state. Also, both of them being able to protect from card effects is very nice, especially because they will always have the uh, unable to get destroyed by battle effect, and I feel like this is just a solid piece of disruption. So next up, we have Inviting Rondo of the Makanko. This is their third and final equip spell. It says it can be equipped to a monster your opponent controls. Uh, you can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. You can only control one inviting Rondo of the Makanko. Take control of the Equip Monster while you control a Makanko monster. The Equip Monster cannot activate its effects while you control it. And when this card leaves the field, send the Equip Monster to the graveyard. Okay, so I guess this one maybe had to uh, specify... I don't know. So, it's weird saying that it can be equipped to a monster your opponent controls. Because every Equip spell, other unless it has a restriction like only equipped to... Uh, like this one has says only equipped to a Makanko. Um, all equip spells, by definition, can technically be equipped to either field, 
but I'm assuming this one is saying that because uh, you equip it to your opponent's monsters to take it, um, or you can equip it to your own thing, uh, maybe? Or maybe it's just saying that you can only equip to a monster your opponent controls. Yeah, it's basically just a snatch deal, honestly. You just get to boom gang an opponent's monster, uh, cannot activate its effects, but that's fine. All you probably need to do is just punch over your opponent's, uh, stuff to get it out of the way and deal more damage to them. And then also, when this card leaves the field, you just send the monster to the graveyard, so they don't even get it back when it dies. Like, so it says take control of the equipped monster while you control a Makanko, right? It's like, y you can just get rid of this for something else, because... So one of them, yeah. So you can use Doorway of the Celestial Makanko. Literally, um, you can punch with the monster that you stole. Sorry that I'm really short on the camera, by the way. You can take control of the opponent's monster, punch with it, use the uh, field spell, send the equip spell, get rid of their own monster on your field, and uh, to use the double attack for your Makanko, which is really strong. Overall, very nice to have a Snatch Steal in an archetype like this, especially because, keep in mind... The Ritual Monster equips them as a quick effect. So you can use this during either player's turn as another disruption. So they have three disruptions so far, which is really strong for an archetype that typically just wants to go into the battle phase and end it. So for their final spell card, we have Makanko Kagura, which is their uh, Ritual spell. It says it can be used to Ritual Summon any Mon Makanko Ritual Monster. Unfortunately, it seems you can only summon from hand. Uh, you can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. Which will summon a Makanko Ritual Monster from your hand by tributing monsters from your hand or field whose total levels equal or exceed the level of the Ritual Monster you Ritual Summon. Then you can destroy cards your opponent controls up to the number of equip spells with different names in your graveyard, and if you do, inflict a thousand damage to them for each card destroyed by this effect. Okay. So hear me out. Hare is a warrior. What involves equip spells and warriors. So what I'm basically thinking here is that you can normal Neospace Connector, special Aqua Dolphin, Aqua Dolphin rip a hand trap from the opponent's hand, make Isolde, use Isolde to add one of these for later, <laughs> effective Isolde, dumping three equip spells like Divine Sword Phoenix Blade from your deck to the graveyard, specialing the Hare from your deck. You can then use Makanko Kagura, attributing the Hare on field and the Hare in hand, and then just get a free ritual monster. And then you destroy, like, three cards guaranteed. Keep in mind, it doesn't target either, by the way. And they're going to take 3k. And then you can proceed to go to battle and swing with the, uh, with the ritual monster. Yeah, I think that's kind of silly, not going to lie. Literal free removal. Cards, keep in mind. Not just monsters. Cards. So if your opponent's playing a deck that has a bunch of monsters and a few pieces of back row on board, you can pop the back row burn them for a bunch you get your makanko monster on board the uh the ritual monster you get to literally equip something from your grave to it or your opponent's mo like okay keep in mind literally uh isolde dump the um the inviting rondo and then uh summon all your stuff like in the combo i mentioned summon this effect equipping the rondo to an opponent's monster stealing it punching one of their monsters with Makanko of the Uhime, and then you can potentially swing with the opponent's monster for game. Okay. Yeah, I can definitely see why this is a hard once per turn. So it looks like they do actually have two trap cards as well, which is interesting. Considering, like I said, they do seem to want to go second a little bit. Uh, so first off, we have Makanko Promise. It is a normal trap that says you can only activate one of it per turn. It specials a Makanko from your hand or deck, but banish it when it leaves the field. Then you can equip it with one appropriate equip spell from your hand or graveyard. So this is just pretty strong, honestly. It gives the deck a little bit of ability to go first. Um, unfortunately, you can't summon the Ritual Monster, but that's honestly fine. You probably won't need to because it can immediately equip an equip spell from your hand or grave to it. So if you open this and then like a few equip spells uh, and you feel like you're in a bad spot, then you're honestly perfectly fine because you can go ahead and summon your Nini, uh, immediately equip it with something that can be really strong, such as your Purifying Dance. You get a free monster steal off of Nini uh, on that turn, off of just that. 
and you also get to uh, bounce your monster for a next turn to use and an opponent's monster. So honestly, off of just an equip spell and off of Makanko Promise, you actually get two disruptions, which can be pretty solid, especially because one is a steal and the other is a free bounce. So finally, for their last card, we have Makanko Catfight. It says you can only use the first and second effects of this card's name once per turn each. If you control a Makanko monster, target one face-up monster in the field, equip it with one appropriate equip spell from your deck. Keep in mind, you can also use the Inviting Rondo. And if an equip spell is sent to your graveyard while this card is in your graveyard, you can banish this card, then target one equip spell in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Uh, note, this one actually uh, exactly eludes us, is pro probably is referencing Kami as in God, Kami possibly as in Hair, but I think it's going for Kami, Argue, and Karabe Contest for Argument. Considering the cat notions of Nini and Hair, um, or Hare being mouse-themed, I think Cat Fight might work. Um, yeah, I think actually that makes a lot of sense, considering the background. Yeah, pretty decent recovery, honestly, because you do have some very cool power equip, uh, equip spells, and it can just quick effect to give you a free inviting Rondo. So yeah, that was their last card. Um, what do I think about this archetype? So, I think this is a really fun archetype. Uh, keep in mind, by the way, I will probably put it in uh, editing and post. You actually can't do that specific Isolde combo. You can't add um, Hare. Uh, off of the effect if you want to special the Hare, you have to just add literally any other uh, level 3. Actually, is it equal for the, um, for the thing? Equal or exceed? No, actually, you can literally just add a second Neospace Connector because the card will be dead after that. So yeah, you can literally just, um, normal Neospace Connector, special Aqua Dolphin, uh, potentially rip a card from the opponent's hand off of that, uh, then go into Isold, Isold dump 3, uh, special Hare. Uh, Isold also add a Neospace Connector from deck because you will probably be playing three. Activate Kagura, um, use the Neospace Connector and the Hare in order to go into your um, Ritual Monster, and then you literally get three pops and 3,000 burn off of just that. I feel like it's a very funny gimmick to actually just basically have an Amazonist Swordswoman to, uh, on every one of your monsters, just repeatedly trying to kamikaze the monsters into your opponent's monsters to try and kill them that way. I always thought it was a really funny strategy for things that did have cards like Amazon as Swordswoman, but to see an entire archetype revolving around that is really fun. I love all these cool um, gimmicks that we're actually giving a lot of the side set archetypes. Like, um, revolving around one monster isn't like a new gimmick. I like the gimmick of the Purity archetype that we revealed. It's still so hard to say that word. And honestly, I kind of like the gimmick of Sky Strike even though Sky Striker just ended up being some like a different monstrosity as a whole. But I like that deck build packs are able to give us some really cool gimmicks overall. I think the deck has a lot of consistency going for it, especially because the Ritual Monster, again, is essentially an illusion of chaos. You're going to be playing a lot of equip spells, and so Hare is just going to almost always be live for her adding for other equip spells. You have some trap cards that allow you to go first and get your bodies out from deck for free. And I think that the board control that uh, aspect that this deck has is really strong. You have essentially two different snatch steals. You have one in the form of a monster that just says, while it's equipped with an equip card, you can steal an opponent's monster. You have an actual legitimate snatch steal that just takes an opponent's monster that, keep in mind, you can, you can equip this on your opponent's turn or just whenever you feel like off of so many different cards. You have the trap cards that can do that. You have the um, Makanko of the Uhime that can do that. You just have so many different ways to just attach for free. They have some decent recovery in the form of cat fights as well as uh, things like Blazing Dance. They can get some good setup off of Great Makanko of Legend in case their hand isn't that great because neither of these effects, they're both hard ones per turns, but it's not one effect per turn or it's not um, except the turn it was sent to the graveyard. I hate that restriction, by the way, with a burning passion. Let me foolish burial goods a cell recombination device, damn it. And I think overall, it does a good job with its gimmick in that all the monsters have the battle protection. Uh, and then you have ways to protect them from card effect destruction as well, so they avoid that. They get Armadi's effects. You can make them swing twice, which can just essentially win you the game there, depending on what they have on board. Like literally, if you bait out a Dragoon Negate, it's at 4k. You get this out and then any of your little ones and you just punch punch a game whatever <laughs> see i think the deck has a lot going for it uh what will i rate it on a scale of one to ten though um so unfortunately because it is so battle phase reliant and because the battle phase is a bit of like an enigma at this point in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, aside from when you're going for an otk or if it's a brick fest um 
And while it does have some pretty good disruptions, I don't think it's enough to stop the average modern deck if you're forced to go first. I'm probably gonna have to do the same as what I did with Puri and give it a decent six. Uh, I think the archetype is fine. I think it's a really fun gimmick. I think it's a really cool gimmick. I don't think it's going to be tearing up like nationals or regional play. It might see a top here and there at a regional, but it's not going to be like dominating YCSs or anything like that. I think we'll have to wait until we get another wave or at least another one or two cards of support to actually see it, how the deck would do. Because while they do have some pretty good setup here, I don't think it's like a be-all end-all so far because only three monsters in an archetype centered around crashing your monsters into your opponent's monsters like that's like nine copies total if you max out and with that little of a chance to see a monster is kind of unfortunate especially because they don't follow the typical deck build pack trend of having a like rota spell i think maybe another monster even if it's another ritual would be pretty solid granted you can play things like extra or prosperity pretty like harmlessly in this deck because you definitely won't be needing your extra deck if you're just kamikaze these. But I don't know, I'll probably have to see an exact build or see it in action because, I don't know, that's just my thoughts. Uh, but let me know yours down in the comments below because that's going to do it in the video. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. If you liked it, please sure to leave a like as helps put this video and the channel into YouTube Recommended. And if you like this content and you want to see more like it like the rest of my review series, I try to review every new archetype and every large wave of support that an archetype gets every time they drop, then perhaps consider subscribing because we're trying to hit 2,000 subscribers by the end of 2022. Once again, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. This is Aurora, signing off.